to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the bible says prove all things hold fast that which is good. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 21. Today we're asking the wonderful question, can a person prove this book, the Bible, is the very word from Almighty God? Is there evidence? Is there proof? Is there substance to the argument, the Bible is the word of God? That's what we're going to consider in our study today and we're so glad you've joined us for this series of lessons on the inspiration of the scripture we hope you'll have your bible ready as we're going to look to the word of god combined with evidence as well to show this book really can be proven to be true and from god again we thank you for joining us today we want you to know that our lessons are being brought to you by individual Christians and members uh, and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether that be on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night. You'll find people there who love God and who'd be more than happy to sit down and discuss the Scriptures with you at any time. If you'd like to know more about God's plan of salvation, the church or some particular doctrine you've been thinking about. We'd be happy to help you in your study of the Word of God. Won't you visit us on our website, thegospelofchrist.com. You can find all of our material archived there. We have transcripts, written study questions, articles, all our audio and video lessons are online, and it's all available free of charge. If you'd like to have a copy of this series, on the inspiration of the scripture or any of our past lessons. We provide that to you free of charge. If you'd like a CD or a DVD, we'll even send that to you in the mail at no cost to you. And so again, check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. And in our fast-paced world today, don't forget to check out the App Store, both the Android and Apple App Store, where you can let download the Gospel of Christ app, which is a great way to study the Word of God in this fast-paced world. So let's turn our attention now to the evidence that the Bible is from God. What evidence is there? Well, friend, there is evidence. There are things mentioned in the Bible that we now know to be absolutely true that men and women then could not have known unless God told them. And it is a strong proof. The Bible is, from the, is the Word of God. Let's begin with the first. Look in your Bible in Job chapter 26, verse number 7. Let's consider the suspension of the earth. All along God told us about it, but men have not always known that. Look in Job chapter 26. The Bible says this about God. He stretches out the north over empty space. Watch this now. He hangs the earth on nothing. What? The Bible says the earth is suspended on nothing? Well, that's not how men have always believed. In fact, throughout human history, men have had a host of different views about the suspension of the earth. And naturally, you can think that would be the case. If you have something out there, something's holding it up, something's supporting it, right? And yet the earth, the Bible said, it says it's suspended by nothing. Let me give you some of the past views men have held. One Greek view about this taught that the earth was being held up on the shoulders of the Greek god Atlas. Of course, we know there is no Greek god Atlas, but that's how people used to think, that you've got this massive Greek god Atlas, and he's holding the earth up on his shoulders. People just couldn't imagine it being out there on nothing. Here's probably the most unusual view. There was another view about the suspension of the earth that taught that the earth 
was actually being held up on the back of four elephants that were standing on a turtle. Now, friend, I want you first to tell me how do four elephants stand on the back of a turtle to begin with, but this was a real idea that people had back then. And yet the question we consider is this. Long, long time ago, how could Job say with absolute certainty that God hung the earth in space on nothing. Friend, this is long before the invention of telescopes. This is long before men had gone to the moon. How did Job know that? Only one answer, and it is a powerful proof for the Word of God as the Bible being inspired. God, who created the earth, and hung it out there on nothing is the same one who told Job in the Bible that he did that. And so proof that the Bible is from, the, from God, the Word of God, is the suspension of the earth mentioned in the Bible. Uh, let me mention another one to you. Open your Bible, if you would, to Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse number 7. We also learn about the water cycle, or what we refer to sometimes as the hydrologic cycle. Look in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, and this is clearly mentioned in the Bible as well. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full to the place from which the rivers come. There they return again. And so you've got this process of, of all the rivers running into the sea, and yet the sea is never so full. If, if all run into the sea, you'd think eventually the sea would be, oh, why is it not? Because you've got the hydrological cycle that goes more than that. You see... Water and snow and ice come down from the mountaintops, from the clouds. That runs down into the rivers, oceans, through the process of evaporation and transpiration, condensation. It goes back up into the clouds, and it's just a continuous cycle. We know that's the case now. We've known that for a long time. And yet God, in the Bible, told us that long, long ago. How did the writer of Ecclesiastes know that? How did he know that with certainty? Well, friend, the God who created the earth and who created the hydrological cycle is the same God who inspired the writer of Ecclesiastes. Here's an amazing one. What about the shape of the earth? Did you know that in the Bible, God told us that all along the earth was round? I want you to look in Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 22. The Word of God records this for us. The Bible says... It is He who sits upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are grasshoppers that stretches out the heavens as a curtain and spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. Now listen to this. It is He who sits above the circle of the earth. Now friend, you've got to use your mind's eye to see this. Here you have God, and He's sitting above something. What's He sitting above? Listen now. The circle of the earth. What did God tell me about the shape of the earth? That it was circular or spherical. That the earth is round and that's the way God designed it. But you know, that's not the only passage that implies that. Luke 17 verse 31 and 34 also imply the spherical nature of the earth. Listen to this. Luke 17 31 says, In that day, he which shall be on the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Now watch verse 34. I tell you in that night, there'll be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. How can it be? Here's the question. That great day when the Lord comes back, how can it be day in one part and night in the other? Well, again, you've got the spherical nature of the earth rotating around the sun, and that clearly again teaches and implies that the earth is round. Now, when you think about this idea, again, please understand, men have not always understood this. While in ancient times there were some who naturally did believe the earth was round, many did not. A very popular view of previous generations was that the earth was flat 
And should you go too far, you would simply fall off. You can remember images of uh, maybe Columbus and people like that and how people thought in that day and age that if you went too far out in the ocean, it'd just be a great drop off because the earth is flat. My well, friend, we know that's not the case now telescopes and looking at that from space and things like that have clearly shown that the earth is round. Now here's the question, the big question. Men haven't always thought that way. Men haven't always known that. How could Isaiah with certainty, absolute certainty, state that the earth was round? Again, this is long before spaceships, Hubble telescope, long before men. How did, they, how did he know that? Well, friend, here's how. God, who created the earth round, authored the Bible, and He's the one who told that to Isaiah. Isaiah was not speaking on his own behalf. God, who created the round earth, is the same God who told that to Isaiah in the Bible. And if God told that to Isaiah, everything God told in the Bible is true and right and holy and good. Let me give you another illustration. I want you to open your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 33, verse number 22. Look in your Bible to the book of Jeremiah. Another great proof of the inspiration of the Bible is God telling us about the innumerability of the stars. Look in Jeremiah 33, verse 22. The Bible says, As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, nor the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the descendants of David my servant and the Levites who minister to me. Here we're told about how the stars cannot be numbered. There's just too many of them. But you know, men have tried throughout history, throughout human history. A lot of famous people have tried to lay down and count, look up and count the stars. For example, Ptolemy. There in the Greek era, counted about 1,056. Uh, Tycho Bray, he cataloged about 777 stars. Johannes Kepler counted 1,005 stars. In fact, the total number of stars visible with the naked eye is about 4,000. If, you, if you're on, at every point on earth, it will be about 4,000. And yet all along, God told us they weren't numerable. With telescopes, we have now learned that Jeremiah was right all along. Now, how could Jeremiah know that? How could he know that great astrological body? If from every point on earth with the naked eye, you can only possibly see maybe 4,000 stars, and yet we now know that you couldn't even begin to count them? How in the world, in the long ago, thousands of years ago, how did Jeremiah know that? Well, friend, there's only again one answer. God, who created the stars, the innumerability of them, is the same God who told jo Jeremiah that. And friend, that's a powerful proof that what God said to Jeremiah is inspired of God and the whole Bible, because God inspired the rioters, is true and right. Let me give you another one. Psalm chapter 8. I want you to open your Bible to Psalm chapter 8. Verse number 8. Let's think about what God says concerning the paths in the sea. Flipping your Bible to the 8th chapter of the book of Psalms, and I want you to look at what's said in verse number 8. The bird, he's talking about all the things God created, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. Now what do you mean by paths in the sea? Several years back, there was a man by the name of Matthew Fontaine Murray. He lived uh, while there were no sailing lanes or no real charts of the sea. One day, while the story goes that one day while he was homesick, his son was reading the Bible to him. And he read from the 8th Psalm. He read that God put under man the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. He said to his son, read that again. And upon hearing it the second time, he said to himself, if the word of God says there are paths in the sea, they must be there and I will find them. And of course we know 
Mr. Murray uh, was a great oceanographer. He was a great man who studied uh, the oceans and that he actually found those paths in the sea, mapped them, and his statue stands at the Annapolis Academy of uh, Oceanography today. He, he, he said if God says it's there, it's going to be there before deep diving sea equipment and sonar technology. Friend, think about this. Before scuba diving, before deep sea diving equipment, before sonar technology, how did David know that? David didn't go down and look at those paths in the sea. How did he know that they're actually paths like roads created in the sea? Well, friend, there's only again one answer. The same God who created those paths of the sea told David that. And friend, if he told David that, everything God said in the Bible because God's that powerful, His knowledge is infinite, His will is true. The Bible is proven as the Word of God. Here's another one that's very interesting, and this comes from uh, medical science. Look in your Bible, if you would, in Leviticus chapter 12, verse number 3. Leviticus 12, 3 says this, And on the eighth day, the flesh of His foreskin shall be circumcised. Now that's a pretty simple statement. That's a pretty easy statement. We can see that's what God taught His people then. But how did Moses know that on day 8 it was the best day to do circumcision? In 1935, a man by the name of Professor H. Dom proposed the name Vitamin K for the factor in foods which help prevent hemorrhaging in baby chicks. We now know that vitamin K, uh, prothrombin, is responsible for the production of prothrombin by the liver. If vitamin K is deficient, then someone's going to be a hemophiliac, they're going to hemorrhage to death and die. Well, here's where it gets real interesting. Vitamin K begins to be produced in the newborn male on the fifth through the seventh day. And it's only on the eighth day that the percent of prothrombin is at its highest level. The only day in the entire life of the newborn child that the clotting factor of prothrombin is extremely high is day eight. Therefore, day eight would be the best day to do circumcision. Friend, think about this with me. How did Moses know that back then. He didn't pull out his microscope. He didn't get his lab equipment. He didn't check the levels of vitamin K and prothrombin. How did he know that? Well, again, there's only one way. The only way Moses knew day eight is the best day to do circumcision medically is because God who created the body God who created vitamin K and prothrombin and God who commanded circumcision told that to Moses. And friend, if that's true, it is a powerful proof that everything God said in the Bible is true and from His mind. Here's another one. What about the recesses of the deep? Job 38 verse 16, God says to Job, Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep. Now God is quizzing Job because Job thinks he's got it all figured out. And God says, have you, have you gone into the springs of the sea? We now know there are springs in the sea as well. Have you gone into the recesses of the deep? Well, what about those recesses? Friend, it was not until recently that we discovered there are vast, deep trenches in the ocean. Let me illustrate. One of these trenches or recesses we have now named as the Mariana Trench. This recess, this trench is somewhere around 38,500 feet deep. That's over six miles deep. Now you look at the ocean, you don't think something being six miles deep. Is there any way possible? that Job could have known about the trenches in the sea. Job didn't have the equipment. He didn't. There's no way Job could have known that there are six mile deep trenches in the sea. How did Job know to write that? God, 
who created those trenches. God who created the earth and God who authored the Bible told Job, and friend, it is a powerful truth. It is a powerful proof that the Bible is indeed the Word of Almighty God. Friend, here's what we want to do. As you think today about these proofs, how does that apply? You know, we can look at a host more of evidence that's found in the Bible. There's a, there's a ton more of it. And you can, look, you can find books and look into information on that. But suffice it to say today, the evidence we've seen, friend, it clearly shows this book can be proven as the Word of God. On every account, it's accurate and it's true and it's right. And so what's the application of that today? Friend, the first application is we can know the Bible is the Word of God. Friend, this is not something that you have to wonder about. This is not something you have to worry about. This is not something that maybe it is and maybe it isn't. You can look at the evidence and you can know this is from God. You can know this is God's divine Word and that it has everything you need for life and godliness. Application is also this. If that's true, we need to love the Word of God. Oh, how I love thy law. It is the meditation of my heart day and night, the psalmist would say in Psalm 19, and of course in Psalm 119 as well. We also need to have a love for the Bible. Friend, do you love the Bible? By that I mean, do you love it to the point that you'll read it? Acts 17, 11, that you'll study the Scriptures daily and that you'll put it to use in your life and share it with others. A practical application is if, if this is the Word of God, then we need to study it regularly. We need to study it every day. Listen to Acts 17, 11 again. Uh, Acts 17, 11. The Bible says, These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they searched the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 The heart of the righteous studies how to answer. Proverbs 15 verse 26 And of course we're told, be ready always. And the only way to be ready is to get ready. And so this book is the word of God. I want to love it. I want to study it. And friend, here's a powerful application. I want to obey it. Does the Bible teach I must obey God's will? Friend, it absolutely does. Listen to these words about Je that Jesus spoke. Jesus said, If you love me, what? Keep my commandments. Luke 6, 46, Jesus chastised the religious elite of His day. You know, a, a lot of these people put on a, lot of good, a good show and gave a lot of good lip service. And Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? He's the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. It's not enough to look up and say, Lord, Lord. That's not who's going to heaven, but He who does the will of my Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 21. And then, friend, not only do I want to obey it initially, but I want to do everything I can to live my life by the Word of God. I want this Word to transform me. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul said, I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And listen to this, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to live by the Word of God every day. I want to be crucified with Christ. Galatians 2 verse 20. I want to be a living sacrifice. Romans 12 verse 1. And I want to be faithful to God each and every day of my life. Revelation 2 verse 10. And then, friend, if this is indeed the Word of God, I want to tell others about God's Word. You know, this is not something you want to hide. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel unto every creature. Matthew 28, verse 18. Share the good news of Jesus and His salvation with as many people as possible. You know, if we had the, the cure to some dreaded disease, 
you wouldn't sit on that or put it under a basket. No. If there was some way we could help people get over some dreaded disease and just be right, why, well, we'd tell everybody about that. Friend, do we not realize this is God's power to salvation? Romans 1.16, that if you receive with meekness the implanted word, it'll save your soul. James 1.21, this is how a man can get right with God, know God, and live forever with Him. And so let's share that message. But ultimately, our message begins with you today if you're not a Christian. Maybe the evidence we've shown today you had not previously seen. Maybe you now realize, hey, there's more to this than I may have first thought. And the things that we've seen today from the Bible have helped you to see. This is the Word of God. Well, friend, if that's the case, how do you get your life right with God? The Bible teaches that God sent His Son to save you and to save me. You'll call His name Jesus. He'll save His people from their sins. Matthew 1, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by Him. Do you believe that? Do you believe in Jesus as God's Son? The Ethiopian eunuch was told, if you believe in Him with all your heart, you can obey the gospel. Acts chapter 8, verse 34 through 36. Would you be willing to repent of sin, turn from a life of sin and rebellion, and turn to God in repentance? Acts 3, verse 19. Would you confess Jesus as Lord and Savior with your mouth? Romans 10, verse 10. With the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And friend, would you, to have every sin washed away, be baptized for the remission of your sins? When Peter first preached the gospel in Acts chapter 2, they got the point. They cried out, men and brethren, what must we do? And the answer was this. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, listen now, for the remission of your sins. Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. Acts 2.38, Mark 16.16. 16. Friend, we're so glad that you joined us for our study today. If we can help you in any way, won't you please contact us? And we pray that you'll join us next time as we're going to study more from the Word of God together. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.